Hello everyone. Damien O'Connor invented this fascinating double-walled tube shape and he had figured out how to build it with the Zen magnets. In this video I show a fast easy way to build it. My tubes look identical to Damien's and have magnets in all of the same places but the magnets in my inner wall are oriented differently their poles line up to produce spiral magnetic field lines that run along the, out, the uh, tube as opposed to Damien's circular magnetic fields. So my tubes are geometrically identical to but magnetically different from Damien's. <clears throat> there seems to be no practical difference between them. Both are very strong and perfectly round. This lighthouse shape illustrates this strength. It is a 4.4 pound double walled tube with 4060 magnets supporting a 7.1 pound snub ball with 6590 magnets. The double walled tube has a fascinating geometry. The outer wall, this wall, consists of rings of 40 magnets stacked directly on top of each other. So this ring around the outside has 40 magnets. That would be ring 1, ring 2, ring 3, and they're stacked directly on top of each other, making 40 vertical columns. There's column 1, column 2, etc. 40 columns around the tube. This wall has square packing, meaning that you have one, two, three, four magnets per square. The inner wall also consists of 40 columns of magnets, but with every other column offset vertically by half a magnet so that the magnets in one column fill in the gaps in the next. So this is the start of one column that runs down the inside. Here's the second column, but it's offset vertically from the first. The third column is back up to the same height as the first. This wall has hexagonal packing. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six magnets per hexagon. And this packing meshes with the square packing of the outer wall to produce a natural curvature of the double wall. As shown in the written description below, 40 column cylinders best match this natural curvature. Each ring in the tube requires 80 magnets, 40 for the outer wall, and 40 for the zigzag ring on the inner wall, up, down, up, down, etc. In this video, I will build this five ring tube with 400 magnets, and I will also build this 25 ring tube, so counting rings two, three, down to 25, and this has 2,000 magnets. This three ring tube is the smallest that you can build, or at least the smallest that I've succeeded in building, but there's no limit to how large you can build it. This one has uh, actually 50 rings in it, although it was built by joining smaller tubes with smaller numbers of rings on it. The inner wall of the tube is built from 20 parallel chains of magnets that are joined to form a sheet. The chain length needed is double the number of rings in the tube. For the five ring tube, we'll need chains of 10 magnets each. Like that. Each chain is added to the sheet with an offset of 1.5 magnets, avoiding contact with the first magnet 
in first magnet in the previous chain. So I'm going to put this chain, the second chain, in contact with the first, leaving this magnet dangling on its own. The first magnet in the second chain contacting magnets two and three of the first chain. And then similar on the, on the far end, leaving one magnet dangling out in space. That's three, four, So here we have the 20 chains, each with 10 magnets. Now we will join the smooth edges of this sheet together to form a tube, leaving the rough edges to be become the two ends of the tube. To ensure that these mate properly, it's worthwhile to pull these end magnets into alignment with their chains. They tend to, to go away, but you have to kind of pull them with your finger to get them into alignment as you match these up. So I'm going to put this end magnet right there. Okay, so that is the inner wall of the tube. Each end of the tube should have 40 magnets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, counting around the end, like that. Alternating between high and low as you move around the circle. If they don't, then the mating process went wrong somewhere. You have to start over or, or modify it. The magnetic fields follow the chains as they spiral, spiral around the tube. So the magnetic field lines run spirally around the tube like that. Damien uses inner walls that look identical to this but they have magnetic fields that go in circles, just circles around the tube rather than spirals. His inner walls are built by fusing smaller tubes, each of which must be built ring by ring. Mine, as you've just seen, are built from a sheet of parallel chains and they snap together quite quickly. The columns of the outer wall are made from a single chain that zigzags between one end of the tube and the other. To start this process, find the end of the tube that attracts the end of the chain and attach the end of the chain to a magnet at this end of the tube. So this actually, I can feel some attraction to this end of the tube. Actually. It'll work either way. So now that I've attached to this magnet on that end, I'm going to hold that end magnet down and start the process like this. So it zigzags along the tube. In alternating directions. And you can start to feel with your left hand on the back side that the tube is getting stronger, more rigid. And picking its own curvature, picking the curvature that will 
uh, allow the magnets to mesh on the inner and outer walls. Just like that. So that's the tube. Uh, very strong with a uh, ring count of five. Has 400 magnets in it in all, 80 magnets in each of its five rings. Now I'm going to build a 25 ring tube using 2,000 magnets. The inner wall of the tube is again made from 20 parallel chains of magnets joined together to form a sheet. The chain length needed is double the number of rings in the tube. For 25 rings, we'll need chains of 50 magnets each. So I'm going to start the stopwatch to show how long it takes to build this tube. We'll join the smooth edges of this sheet together, pulling the end magnet in the first chain into alignment with the others in the chain. And these rough edges will become the top and bottom. And I'm gonna put this magnet right there. Not in the first groove, but on the second one. What? Just like that. So now we'll add chains of alternating polarity to form the outer wall. Now this one has, uh, in, in contrast with the, with the five ring tube, this one definitely doesn't want to go down on that end. <clears throat> but it does attract to this end, you can tell that. So we'll just let it, let it attract to one magnet then I'm going to hold that magnet. So here's the magnet that it attracts to. Hold that magnet down so it's in place and then start the process like this. Six minutes, 10 seconds or so. Pretty good for a shape with 2,000 magnets in it. You can snap two tubes together to form a larger, a longer tube. Now if that happens, then you know you've got the polarity wrong. So in other words, they, don't, they yeah. didn't mesh together here. So it's easy to separate them. In fact, in some applications, this might be more interesting. 
to line them up like that. Just turn one of them over and then they should line up just fine. Just like that. Add to this 50 magnet stack. Okay, so that's a, a massive tube. If, uh, if you want a more finished look, you can remove the top layer of the magnets in the inner wall like this. It has a little bit more square edge. You can do it on, on both sides if you want to. That re reduces the total magnet count by 20, obviously, since you're removing 20 magnets. Just like that. So you can see now, when you look on the end, it's a nice square end as opposed to the inner wall having some protruding magnets. So that is a double walled tube. Good luck and thanks for watching. Here's a tube with 133 rings and 10,640 magnets.